So the next step in our shoe building process is going to be adding stitches to the various panels. But before we do that, I want to introduce you to the stitching tool. If you're not familiar with it, it is a really, really cool feature of Moto. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my spheres and uh, I'm just going to uh, add a new sphere there to a new layer and uh, hit shift tab to make sure it's a Catmull Clark. Then I'm going to shrink it down. I'm going to resize this and uh, bring up my measurements here and bring it down to roughly the size of a shoe, which is what, about nine, 10 inches right around there in uh, diameter. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so uh, next thing we will do is I'll go to my edges. I'll double click on uh, one of the edges there um, and I will hold the control key, deselect those and just select these guys here and i'm going to run a stitch along this along this uh, edge here i'm going to go to the stitch mesh tool i'm going to click on that and that brings up a little requester panel and we're going to go to use stitch preset and what that is it's just going to bring up my preset browser and let me pick what stitch i want to use because there's a, a lot of stitches you can pick from in this so i'm going to go okay um and as far as the uh, curve source goes, I'm going to click here and I'm going to go up to the top where it says selected edges procedural. Okay. And that's all I got to do. And that's all I have to do and click OK. And it's going to bring up the uh, preset browser, allow me to select one of these stitches. I'll select the first one, go OK. And there it is. So what we're seeing is uh, Moto is using the vertices along these edges as uh, as uh, nodes as far as the stitches go and uh, and it's created a curve let's go here curve source and there's the curve that it it created for these stitches now is that curve editable mm, not really because it's a procedural curve um, so if i have if i have edges that are very, very close approximation of where I want the stitches, I'll do it using this method. Otherwise, I will create my own curves along the surface of the object uh, to act as the uh, stitching guide. So let's do that real quick. Let's uh, go to a fresh layer, an empty layer. In this case, uh, there was one already here called Mesh. And I'm going to select a curve. Now, the stitch tool doesn't care what type of curve I choose, whether it's whether it's a spline curve here or a bezier or uh, a B-spline. It doesn't really care. So I'm just going to pick the regular curve. But I'm going to make sure my mesh constraint is on here so that my curve sticks to the surface as closely as possible to the surface of the sphere. And there, let's just do that one. Okay, so there is my curve, and I'm gonna just go ahead and rename this mesh just so that I know and keep things straight. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna go back to the tool. I'm going to do uh, click on Stitch Mesh and keep Use Preset, Use Stitch Preset. And this time I'm gonna say uh, Curve Mesh Source Existing Mesh and uh, it's gonna ask me, well, which existing mesh is it? And it's called Curve. That's the curve I wanna use. I'll click OK. And I'm gonna select, uh, let's select this fat one. Click OK. Now you don't see anything at first, and that's because the stitches need a surface to align to. When we create our own curve, it doesn't know what mesh we're trying to align to, and that would be the sphere. So right here where it says Source Curve is a curve alignment mesh, it needs to be the sphere, and there it is. All right, the cool thing about this is it's very easy to edit your curve now. And notice that as I edit this, you know, these curves, these stitches stick to the, stick to the sphere. Even if I turn off my background constraint, and let's go back to the polygons again, and let's pull it out away from the mesh, but the stitches still stick onto the, onto the sphere. All right, so that's pretty cool. The other thing we could do, let's look at some of the other parameters here real quick. The parameters for adjusting a curve are in the parent locator item here. 
are you know, they're actually in the properties panel but you have to select the parent locator of the stitch item and so um, we can at any time of course change the preset if we don't like that fat curve we want a long thin one click OK that changes that you can even make your own stitch that's not a problem you just uh, make a make a model of the stitch you only need one and uh, center it in the very center of your scene um, if we if we go into here if we look real close I'll turn off the sphere you can see there's our stitches right there go to items there they are oops zoom in real close there we are there's the two stitches and you can also change these uh, as far as modeling goes you can you can change the the shape of these uh, these prototype models and it will change your stitch so anyway so that's pretty cool um, the other thing we can do is uh, we can adjust the size and placements of the stitch right now the gap is at hundred percent if we uh, increase or decrease that gap you can see the gap between the stitches are changing or is changing so there's another cool feature here called uh, surface offset and that uh, allows you to change the offset away from or a little closer to the surface of the the object that the stitches are attached to and the reason for that is that sometimes you might build a little trough or a little ridge for the stitches to sit on so let's uh, move on and uh, let's look at uh, different stitch types too let's go to uh, add double stitch and look what we've got there now i might want to change uh, uh, my preset based on a different type of uh, stitching that i have and i can do that too we can uh, change some features of that just have it on one side or the other side of that curve um, we can actually add a third row of stitches right in the center and we can just uh, remove this whole thing by clicking remove and go back to the the base stitch that we have uh, we can add a cross stitch that's pretty cool and again there's some parameters down here to adjust we won't get into that right now um, we can do a v stitch and we can do one of my favorites the baseball stitch that's awesome and again there are parameters that you can change on this as well because sometimes you don't want it to look too perfect so you can do a little bit of randomization on it all right now of course we can i'm going to just remove that and go back to the base uh, we can also uh, add some color to our stitches and I'm, this was the last one i added so that's this guy right here and uh, i'm going to just change the color here Real quick there we go and you'll notice if you look real close you can see some sort of a threading on here now open shield doesn't really show it correctly so I'm gonna uh, start up my preview render right there and just zoom in here how's that there we go and if you look real close you can see that there is uh, a little wind on each of the threads makes like it's made up of other threads and so that's pretty cool so when you want to get real close to it i'm going to turn off the specular mount here so it makes more of a flat color all right yeah so that's pretty cool um the other thing is that uh you know when the the uh certain types of stitches and certain type of sewing devices will add uh holes and you can see those holes uh they're very visible in the stitching uh, on the on the material that the stitch is in so we could go back here to the uh, curve parameters or the uh, excuse me the stitching parameters all the way to the bottom here um, let me go to that uh, properties here all the way to the bottom you can click on add stitch holes and if I click that look at that it added little holes or little divots if you will for where the holes would be now if you're really close to your shoe and you need to see those holes with a little more definition you can go to the shading up here and we'll get into this a little bit later and instead of uh bump map uh, we'll right click and we'll change that to uh let's see displacement and you can see it's much more pronounced now and uh, sometimes you need to get that close uh, and with the, as with all displacements, you just want to be sure that you go into the render settings 
uh, and click at the very bottom displacement as bumps and that smooths that out a lot and gets much more pronounced uh, stitching holes there but uh, but yeah so that's uh, that's the stitching tool in a nutshell but we'll get into it in the next video in more detail stitches are actually considered replicator items and by default moto shows replicators as just bounding boxes and it's sometimes really hard to gauge what your stitches actually look like when they just look like little boxes so if you click on the little cog up in the upper right hand corner or hit the o key to bring that panel up um, if you go to the top drawing and control edge tab there and look here where it says replicators it's set to none just set that to all. Now your replicators show up as stitches, or at least the model that's representing them as a prototype. 